Hey guys, very good morning. This is Sukesh joining in. Hello, Sukesh. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Sukesh. Good morning. Pawan here. Yeah. Hey, Pawan. Good morning. Give me two more minutes, guys. Uh, let me let me start uh, the server, and then we start.
Guys, you only have to join uh, the audio. You don't need to join the video. And when you're not talking, uh, stay on mute and minimize the disturbance. <clears throat> Hello. Yes. Yes, Rupesh. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Rupesh, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Hello? Yes? Hello? Krupesh, can you hear me? Everyone else, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. I will uh, start sharing uh, the screen in a moment, so then you will be able to see. Hello. Well. Yes, uh, Krupesh, we can hear you. Hello. Hello. Yes. Guys, does anyone have uh, his number? Can someone call him? I will call him. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Yes. 
hello can yeah you? yeah yeah yes yes mr sukesh i can able to hear you so okay. i had some problem with my head for headset it seems i unable to hear properly <laughs> now okay. i got connected yeah great great all right yeah i hope from our end everyone joined uh, from my hand pavan ku pavan balram and uh, sharath one more guy i hope everyone joined pavan uh, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, your friend joined. Yes, yes, yes. He joined. Puneet. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Joined. Okay, fine, fine. Okay. Are we waiting for someone? No, no. We were just waiting for for our conversation to get sorted because you were not able to hear us. Ah, oh, okay, okay, fine, sir. Can you guys uh, see the screen now? Yes, yes, we can see the screen. give me a minute my pen seems to have a problem hold on Okay guys so we we are here for <clears throat> uh, there's one more thing so those who are not talking uh, if you guys can stay on mute it will be very good we will have a minimum disturbance and uh, once you have to speak uh, you can obviously unmute and say whatever you have to say and just make sure that you are not talking on mute sometimes it will happen that you are talking and nobody else is responding or i am not responding maybe because you are talking on mute 
and uh, there's one more thing before we start anybody uh, any preferences with the language usually uh, we do it in english plus hindi both so anyone who does not understand hindi at all from our end we don't have any problem uh, sukesh okay great so uh, you, you you guys want me to do this in hindi or in english or mix uh, uh, english would be better suppose if uh, someone required uh, you can explain in hindi uh, as well as in english both languages that would be fine for us okay okay cool <clears throat> okay so uh, before we start let me tell you guys a little about uh, myself uh, those who joined late uh, my name is uh, sukesh deswal i am a cci security i did cci in 2015 late 2015 and since then i have been renewing it yeah and regarding my experience i have got on and off record i've got about 10 years of experience i started networking way back when i was in college maybe first year or second year i believe so since then i've been uh, learning these things i would not say that i am a master now although i have started training but that makes me uh, stay connected with the technology because you don't really get to work on everything once once you once you climb up the ladder you don't uh, you don't see a lot of issues every day like my profile is about handling the p1 cases so you don't really get a p1 every day so this makes me uh, stay connected helps me stay connected with whatever i have learned so far so this session is just treated as a uh, a two way session it's not that only i will be telling things and you guys are here only to listen to me you guys can put in your views i may be wrong you guys some of you may be more experienced than me so that's completely fine i'm open for uh, views so you guys can uh, put in if if there is a certain thing that you feel that that can be done in a better way i am all ears for that yeah okay fine sir yeah and okay regarding uh, our courses since we were discussing on uh, f5 and other things to be done so the main thing we were uh, trying to say is uh when you do things on weekend uh, we will try to do it at this time only like we will try to do it on saturday and sundays uh, 10:30 we will be doing this on a saturday and sunday 10:30 to 12:30 okay and uh yeah from my end from your end we both try not to miss the sessions because else it will get very lengthy the course will get very lengthy because you miss one or two sessions it gets extended by one week so that is that is the worst part about uh, doing weekend batches so i i actually avoid it but uh, since some of you guys were waiting since very long atul told me so we took this so let's try and not miss the classes yeah and okay. uh, because um, after two three classes four classes i i try and uh, not cancel the classes at all but i have been getting a request to postpone are sir ye weekend pe gaon jana hai idhar jana hai udhar jana hai like that so just uh, try to avoid uh, making those requests yeah fine fine sir okay. so in, in fact in our case we are especially looking for a weekend only and we have taken a permission from uh, our company because we, we we like we five six people we all are working in a 24 by 7 and only because of this class we yeah, took yeah, a yeah. permission to yeah. um, that is why we we agreed to i agreed to take this class yeah yeah and then we are waiting past from some more than two months 
Yeah. <laughs> this is a, this batch started from us all it seems. <laughs> I used to speak uh, with a uh, tool pass from two months. <laughs> Ultimately yeah. I uh, one when the one on some case I thought uh, this batch this batch will not start. <laughs> okay. Actually, thanks for months, I was uh, I was traveling and plus I was also having uh, the the daily batches. So that is the reason we were not very sure what will happen in the next uh, two months. I mean, I was not very sure where will I be in next uh, two months. So that is why we did not uh, respond very well on that. Okay. All right, no problem. Uh, for uh, theory, we will learn like on the way. As, as we proceed in the course, we will do things uh, theoretically as well as uh, practically. Each topic will cover the theory first, followed by uh, the practical on the same topic. And for practicals, you have this uh, public access to the server. Uh, all you guys will have uh, access to it. You guys can also uh, set this up on your uh, on your machines if they're capable enough. So what we can do here is uh, we can run a lot. This is our uh, topology for for F5. We have a big IP um, LTM virtual edition, which is available for trial for uh, 90 days, 90 from F5. So we will start from uh, scratch, like uh, licensing the device and configuring it for the first time, like the IP addresses, putting in the licenses, enabling the features, enabling resources to the to the system, understanding the operating system, how it works, <clears throat> understanding the CLI uh, navigation of it, also in the GUI. We will do most of the things on GUI, but we will also see if at all you have to do things on CLI, how do we navigate through that. We will not be doing a, a lot of uh, CLI, but I will give you certain tips which will make you, which will make it very easy to work through CLI. Like I'm sure you guys have worked on uh, devices like Cisco and Juniper. So this one uh, should not be a difficult one. And it's CLI is very similar to, uh, to, to Juniper. Things are in hierarchy. So if you know the hierarchy, there's just one chart. You just have to remember that. So I'll be telling you things. Okay. So I was talking about the topology. So one topology here is we have this uh, test machine, which will be acting as a user, also as a uh, management console for our F5. And uh, there are these uh, three servers which are running services like HTTP, HTTPS, and FTP. And in the physical here, I have this one server, which is having uh, multiple instances in there, which means this is having, uh, further virtualization in it. So this one node is having three servers inside it, 20.1, 20.2, and 20.3. And this, uh, you can access through your uh, office, through your any, any uh, public network or private network. Even if uh, things are restricted, you can access things on uh, HTTP because HTTP is nowhere restricted where you, where you get uh, internet access. Where internet is, you get HTTP or HTTPS. So you can access this. Yeah. So you just have to click on this and you get access of the PC. 
okay and similarly you just have to click on uh, these and you get access to the server similarly for f5 these are all uh, consoles these are not uh, telnet or ssh sessions these are all uh, console connections so this is about uh, the lab we will come back to it and any questions regarding how do we do practicals and other stuff now because usually people ask how do, how are we going to do uh, the practicals okay so you know, this thing uh, this lab we can about suppose if you want to practice uh, we can set up a lab in such a way the way you did yeah, yeah. Uh, it, uh, you guys can create your own folder and inside that you can create your own uh, topology anything okay. anything that you create here uh, i will be giving you usernames so okay. whatever uh, say for example this lab is uh, f5 ltm so this lab will be available to you but it will not have any configuration because uh, that will be configured by me so you will have to configure it from scratch okay So okay. right. there are two ways in which you can do. You can use the same topology, but if you use the same topology, you will not have to make any changes here in the physical the the way it looks. Because okay. if I if I if I delete say for example this object from here, it gets deleted for everyone. But the configuration inside these devices is is individual, is local to every user. Okay, okay. Okay. So, topology uh, looks you, topology looks same but configuration we have to do it ourselves. Exactly, exactly. Okay. okay. And I also recommend that you guys can create uh, your own uh, topology. Okay. And uh, we will have a lab access so like a 24 by 7 whenever we want we can access and we can practice it, right? There is no any restrictions. Yeah, there is no restriction. It's just that uh, there are times when the server will be off. You just have to let me know. Okay. I will start this for you. Okay, fine, fine. That's good. All right. Okay. Anyone else has any other question regarding uh, the practical or or the yeah, and uh, regarding F five. since we are going to start with f5 i'm talking only about f5 as of now uh, we will uh, cover up things from scratch let me let me show you all the all the topics just give me a minute uh, yes okay sir i do have a question so are we getting some workbook where we can set up different lab scenarios or we need to do it by our the lab the lab that we are doing here is 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 from the workbook of f5 itself f5 has provided uh, lab manuals for for certain uh, topics or courses i would say so all the uh, topics and all the even the ip addresses and the topology is also the same so i will be sharing that uh, workbook with you guys also once we are once we have learned uh, things so that you guys can uh, practice following that uh, workbook hello yeah yeah uh, my query is like um, each we can do we need to use the same link to join this session or how yes uh, every time you guys join in uh, we use the same link oh okay yeah so the the installation and the downloading that you guys did uh, that was just a one time thing mm -hmm. next time you guys click on the link you will be in the meeting very fast okay Thanks. Yeah, I was showing you the topics. Give me a minute.
Guys, give me a minute. I'm looking for the document where I've kept those. Okay, no problem. I will tell you guys without without the book, not getting it. <clears throat> so for F five, uh, we start with licensing. And then uh, we talk about some basics of CLI plus uh, the operating system. How how does it uh, how is it coupled together? There are uh, like in Cisco, you have uh, the the mini operating system and the main iOS. So there is a similar thing here. We talk about those things and then uh, we talk about some of the other uh, building blocks like uh, what are pools, what are nodes, how do you make uh, virtual servers and how do they function together, right? Then we also talk about uh, putting in the resources to uh, the F5. And And then we also talk about different type of virtual servers. And then we talk about natting. There are different uh, concepts of uh, natting in F5. It's not, uh, there are uh, multiple ways that you can, you can do uh, natting in F5 depending upon different use cases. So we will look at all those use cases. And then uh, there are some e exceptional uh, things that F5 can do. We look at those things under profiles. And then we do SSL encryption, decryption, offloading, SSL bridging, so we look at all those things here and then we also look at uh, some of the advanced type of virtual servers like earlier uh, when we start up with virtual server we will look at uh, just the standard virtual server here and uh, different use cases of this uh, standard virtual server and then we look at uh, the advanced part of or, or some advanced algorithms i would say of load balancing okay. and then we look at i rules there are uh, amazing things that the device can do but with the help of i rules only it's kind of a scripting that you do for the device and it uh, overpowers each and every setting that you do on the device so whatever is defined in this is the final thing and then there is a uh, GUI version of uh, iRules. They, they don't call it GUI version of iRules. That's, that's my own term to make you guys understand. They call it uh, local traffic policies. 
that is defined uh, via GUI. Okay. So uh, there is nothing that you can do in iRules and you cannot do in local traffic policy. So if you're not that good with or not that great with scripting, or you just have the logic, but you do not know the syntax of iRule, you can uh, do this. <laughs> this is the one for you. And then we also do uh, high availability, HA, right? And uh, different ways that you can set it up. And this, this will be the last topic for F5. And there are other things in which I have not listed here, small, small things are there. So I have, I hope uh, this is good enough. This is, uh, I would say, deep enough, starting with the basics and going up to making I rules and doing HA. So I don't think uh, anybody should have a question on this. Like we don't have enough content and all. What do you guys have to say on this? Yeah, this is good, sir. <clears throat> it is good only. And uh, high availability mean it is uh, like redundancy? Yeah, redundancy. Okay. Okay, fine. Like you do in, in, in firewalls, like right? active standby, that thing. Yeah, that I, we, we understood that. Yeah. So that uh, uh, health monitor and all will be covered under... Ah, yes, yes, right. Monitors. How could I forget that? Somewhere here, we also do monitors, health monitors. And then uh, there are three different type of monitors that you can put in here, service check. And yeah, you will look at all those. The types of load balancing, the Randall comes under profile or? Yeah, that comes under, uh, Virtual servers, there are different round, round robin and other uh, algorithms, which we will look at those, uh, those here. We will look at round robin and some ratio load balancing here. And then we look at some advanced uh, load balancing algorithms here. We are fine with this, sir. Yeah, the content is good. You, you guys are okay with this so we can we can start with this then sir uh, in f5 i think another thing is that means i am not completely aware of it so that sync state uh, how to configure the sync status about the sorry what a sync status between that uh, it is coming under ha or what means in yeah, between that the... will be under ha the syncing of the devices right yeah 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 th that will come under ha So see, uh, there is uh, uh, there is most of the things that you in, in a in a in a profile where you have to monitor, troubleshoot, implement, or support F5. I have tried to include those things here. I, I I'm not sure uh, which certification they fall under. They are into 201 and 202, I believe. First of all, you have to go through F5 uh, 101 certification, which is all about CCNA and other uh, TCP stuff. Once you do that, you have to do the 201 and 202. So these uh, topics, they, they talk about the second certification, which is 201 and 202. So I, I would not say that uh, you guys must go for certification, but F5 certification is, is something that you can, uh, you would want to have. But if you don't have it and you're good enough with F5, I would not say that you're missing on anything. That is okay. The certification these days are they're good to have, but you don't uh, miss it. <laughs> If you have like four or five years of experience, uh, doing certification is good. And if you have like eight plus or 10 plus years of experience, it would not uh, take you anywhere. Yeah. 
Neeraj, you have some question? No, sir. Okay. Okay, guys. Anyone has uh, questions regarding anything? The way we deliver uh, things, the way things are going so far, uh, the entire course will be like that. Be doing some handwritings for uh, understanding theoretical concepts. I'll be doing through uh, most of the things with PPTs. If that is not enough, I will write things and explain. Yeah, we will decide on the fly that if you guys are understanding or not. And regarding practicals, uh, I've shown you the server. So we will do things. And each one of you, I don't think anyone would give you this, but each one of you will give you, uh, will get uh, your own credentials. And you will have uh, complete access to it. And not just F5, uh, it would have images for firewalls, routers, switches. So if at all you have to practice other things also, you can do that. The, the practical access is not limited to F5. And the images which are there here, you can uh, you can set this up uh, thing in your machine as well. And if anyone is interested in setting this up, I can help you out with that also. And that comes at a later stage. Okay, should we start now? Sure, sir, we can start. Okay, so let's start by by making the device ready, as in making our uh, big IP ready. I'll show you from where to download uh, the licenses and uh, the activation key. Okay, let me default this first. You just have to enter this command load system config default and it will initiate the default configuration and looks like it has a reset and there's a long CLI prompt that you get here and it also gives you uh, a brief very brief uh, status about the device so it says uh, the module is not licensed and lies or the license is inoperative 
So the very first thing that we have to do is license the device. And it has a dedicated uh, management interface by default, whose IP address is 192.168.1.245. This would have dot two four five. And any idea? There's an interesting thing here for dot uh, two forty five. Usually the devices would have 192.168.1.1, but uh, they've kept it dot two four five. So why do they have kept it like that? Any idea? Uh, no idea. Pay extra decimal value, I think. Sorry? We have pay extra decimal value. Yes, dot two four five uh, stands for the hex digit F five. So if you convert F five to uh, decimal, that's two forty five. So that's how they have kept it. So to get uh, the trial keys, uh, the trial license keys, the very first thing that you have. To have is an account on F5. And since we are running a virtual edition, we click on a virtual edition and Okay, and I've changed the website again. Okay, you go to this link. You have to log in or register whatever is suitable for you. And this gives you an option of uh, getting the trial keys. So what is the purpose of this trial? You could say you want to evaluate. You could choose anything. And choose this. And when you choose how many licenses would you like, choose uh, maximum three because we will need two more licenses when we do HA in a different lab. So we will use those uh, two keys then. Here, this is not the normal capture. You only have to enter the black text. We mailed in the next 30 minutes. So usually it takes 5 to 10 minutes. They say 30 minutes. So in the meantime, I will explain about certain things about uh, F5 and we get the keys. Guys, you don't have to start a video. Someone has joined, it seems, with iPhone.
Hello, iPhone. Hello. So what's your name? Uh -huh, Mike. Okay. Uh, Mike, from next on, next time on, we'll just put in your name here instead of iPhone. And uh, you don't have to uh, start the video. I'm stopping it for you. And I'm putting it on mute as well. So if you have to speak, you can unmute. Yeah. Okay. Now you can hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. Let me check. It looks like we've received the keys. Yeah, Mujib, just hold on.
Okay. We have not received the keys yet. Okay. No issues. We talk a little about uh, F5 in the meantime. <clears throat> So guys, so, if like, yeah. Uh, here, I just have one question. So, if you want to, uh, do, if you want to set up the same uh, like a lab in our PC or in our uh, own server, mm -hmm. so uh, what are the things we need to install? Uh, you will have to install a VMware Workstation. Okay. And uh, you should have uh, a minimum of I would say sixteen GB of RAM. Okay and preferably i7 processor okay yeah that's it okay and good amount of hard disk okay okay fine fine yeah so if you have that you can it will be easy to set up otherwise it will be very slow with i5 and if you have lesser ram Okay, fine, fine. In fact, uh, so we are having our uh, VMware machine in our office. Uh, so we are planning to make it as the lab for our purpose. Yeah, in so that case, you can you can uh, you can enjoy a lot of things on that. You can okay. instead of VMware workstation, then you can put uh, ESX on that. Okay. And uh, on the ESX, you can create virtual machine like I have done my server. So you can do it in a similar way. Okay, fine. We will try and uh, I will call, sir, if I, if I require any assistance on, the, on setup. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. So... <clears throat> F5 is like, uh, you guys have worked on uh, routers and switches, right? So F5 is like Cisco, it, it is the name of the company, and Big IP is their product. They, they name it Big IP, and inside this Big IP umbrella, or inside this Big IP device, they have all the capabilities. Capabilities of a firewall, of an application acceleration of access control. They have facilities of application security, DNS service, which is the global uh, load balancing, and the load balancing LTM, which is the local traffic manager. So what we are looking at is this module of the device. So we are not even learning one device because there is just one device that F5 makes, which is big IP. and in big ip there are different modules that function so whatever license you purchase you can activate that right so these are different modules uh, and f5 sorry and when i say f5 or big ip i i i mean big ip okay so big ip is kind of a i find it weird for some reason so i say it f5 and there, there are a lot of people who say f5 so f5 means here Big IP and for our course, F5, Big IP, LTM, load balancer, it is all the same. So we are referring to the same thing, local traffic manager. Okay, so in Big IP, there are two operating system. They call it TMOS and Big IP administration. TMOS is the traffic manager. All the traffic uh, goes through this and all the modules are uh, built under this TMOS. Big IP administration, on the other hand, is having all the all the administration administrative uh, tools tools like the GUI, the TMSH, and and the CLI. So we will look at uh, all these things: TMSH and a CLI. TMSH and uh, CLI, they they are the same. CLI is like the Linux CLI prompt that you get, or, or the bash prompt you can say. TMSH is the inbuilt, uh, um, the, the proper CLI which we are used to. We as in the network engineers are used to the question mark for help and tab for completing up. So this is the, this is the shell uh, prompt you can say. 
So this is where all the commands or all the other things will work for you with some help. CLI will be pure uh, expert mode where all the commands of TM shell will work in CLI, but you will not get the question mark help and, and the tab will not auto complete the commands that will not happen. So you will have to know the command if you have to fire it in the CLI mode. So the best is you go to the CLI, enter the command TMSH, hit enter, and then enjoy the world with some help. Right? So we will look at that. So this is just an overview about that. And GUI is obviously uh, using the browser. You access the device using uh, the management interface. IP address, you can change it or initially we will definitely access it by the default IP address. Yeah. And iApps is uh, like in, in it, this is something futuristic wherein you can uh, configure the device with the APIs and other things. This is with uh, SDN. So we will not be uh, looking at this, I would say, in this course. Okay, shall I move ahead for the LTM? We are looking at this module now. All right, so if you guys think that from your PC or from your mobile phone, laptop, any terminal, you access any application and that is going to just one uh, application server which is having some public IP address fulfilling your request. Is that how things are working? Answer is no. How do you think uh, Google is, uh, uh, what do you say, fulfilling all the millions and billions of uh, queries coming every day or every second, right? They have multiple servers, right? They have multiple server on the basis of region. They have different servers on the basis of uh, the kind of request that you are sending, right? They will have different for maps. They will have different for images. They have different servers for videos, YouTube, and stuff like that. So there is no one super server kind of a thing which is having a public IP address, right? There is a pool of servers every time. Whenever there is an application, yeah, give me a moment, someone's calling. Hello? Okay, I'm back, sorry. So we were talking about, uh, yeah, there's a pool of servers. There's no single uh, super server kind of a thing which is uh, fulfilling all the requests, okay? So that, that is not how things are working. How things are working is something like this. So all the all the clients from across the globe, they send queries to a particular URL or a particular IP address and that IP address reside on a device like this. Now that is a public IP address here, 
this is where your query lands first and this device which is a load balancer so this forwards your uh, queries to the servers to the available server there is a pool of server available to this device and whichever server is available first or uh, depending upon the algorithm that it is following to send the queries to the pool of servers it uh, does things like that and there are certain other things along with a load balancing that it does it also monitors the server status so whatever server is not available your queries will not be forwarded to that particular server just to die right so the f5 is an intelligent device it would know that this particular server is not available for any xyz reason not available does not mean that the server is down it is powered off or something it could be it could be too busy it could be slow right so all these things can be uh, can be known by f5 if i would know through this through his uh, algorithms that this particular server is slow it would take more time as compared to these other servers so i would not forward queries to this server for some time once it will be free i will send other queries again so there are very intelligent algorithms designed across uh, this device to perform optimally right any questions till now it's fine sir okay cool and it looks like we have the keys yeah so it takes some time guys to get the keys i feel for me only it takes time because i've been requesting for these again and again so this is how you get keys for big ip and there's also a promotional device that they they are sending keys for that is big iq we just ignore that these are the three keys that we need for big ip virtual edition and if you have to download the virtual edition again you go back here f5 they've changed the website too much actually it's good now previously you you would not find this login or register uh, option uh, too obvious abhi kaisa dikh raha hai na acche se earlier it was very small very hidden kind of a thing it was okay you reached the maximum allowed virtual trial keys per year okay i don't mind so this virtual edition we are using only for the labbing purpose if i'm not wrong yes uh, but you would see this in in production also where uh, where the where the hardware requirement is not uh, too obvious you don't need uh, things like ssl offloading and other hardware intensive things 
where, where you just need a load balancer to do minimal task. So you can apply this in production also, given okay. more resources. So it does not really matter. Okay, okay, fine. Mm, okay, this is the old site that they had. Downloads.fi.com will give you this. Please share this link 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 with us. That yeah. would be fine for us. Else, again, we need to search. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm putting this in the group chat that we have. So anyway, you, you don't have to download this. You will only have to download this if you want to set it up on, on your machine or on your uh, servers. Yeah, this is where you get uh, different options. You will get uh, the ISO file. You will get, uh, they have, okay, this link only has ISO, it seems. You also get uh, OVA files here. Uh, OVA files are like uh, the already built uh, virtual machine. You just have to import that to your, uh, hypervisor, maybe workstation or uh, ESX. Yeah. Anyway, this was just for your information from where do you get these. You will not uh, need these things as long as you are accessing things on my server. And even if you need, I will have uh, the images. You guys can contact me. So don't have to be troubled about uh, downloading it. Okay, fine. Okay, so for now, we have this uh, keys. Let's put the keys in our device. So this is having as per our topology. Though the PC is having two NIC, one is connected to the internet and the others are connected towards uh, the management and the internal of the F5. So here it is Ethernet 1, which is connected to management. And how do we find what which is Ethernet 1? And there are at times where you will, especially in this new updated Chrome, when you click on this, this opens up, but you see nothing here. But if you see there is this very little window in the, uh, in the bottom center, so you just have to refresh this and that gets big, okay? So don't think that it is not opening up. And you will also have to give IP addresses when you do things. So how will you, how will you figure out here which is Ethernet 0, Ethernet 1, and Ethernet 2? So here you will get something like this, local area connection, local area connection 2, and have more here. So you read things like this, local area connection, when there is nothing written here, it is zero. When local area connection two, one step bigger than this, this is ethernet one. Local area connection three, one bigger than this. Okay, this is for Cisco. This is for Cisco. This is the local area connection five, and this is ethernet two. So Ethernet 0, Ethernet 1, and Ethernet 2. It is like that. So I am going to enable Ethernet 2 so that we get internet connectivity on this PC because we will need internet to reach to F5 uh, servers for activating this device.
and we require ethernet one ethernet one to have uh, this is short ethernet one to have uh, 192 1.0 ip address this is having 10 network which is good so ethernet one which is having 192 1.0 and you don't have to give a gateway to it because you don't give multiple gateways on the same machine. And with HTTPS, you access the device. By default, it is admin admin. Okay. By default, it is admin admin. And to license the device, you have to go through certain steps. Okay. Not here. Here. So there are two ways in which you can license the device. One is automatic and second is manual. Automatic licensing requires F5 device to reach the servers, which means this device needs to have uh, internet access. And the second option is the, the PC through which you are accessing the device has internet connection. So for in our case, we have the second option. So what we have to do is we have to get the registration key put it in the in the device create a dossier that dossier will be uh, given to the f5 server and the f5 server will give us the license ranjit you have a question hello Okay, guys, please stay on me if you don't have uh, questions. Okay, yeah. About licensing, there are two ways of licensing. Yeah, two ways of licensing. Uh, one is automatic, second is manual. In manual, these are the steps that we have to perform. So let's look at things practically. So this is the first thing uh, that you have to uh, go through to license the device. This is the setup utility and you have to activate certain things to, to be able to use the device or other configurations. So the very first thing is you activate the device and to activate the device, you will need uh, the registration keys. And this is where we have the registration keys and unfortunately we cannot do a copy based Any of the any of the key we can take now? Yeah, any one key we can take. So I try and do things sequentially so that we know which two keys are remaining for HA. Okay.
Okay, so I hope we have XWWQS. Okay. And if there are any other uh, add on keys for uh, it's like there is this main license, and then you add the sub license to it. And that's where you use this. So the default activation method is selected automatic. It definitely requires an outbound connectivity. So we select manual. So when we select manual, and do next, this gives us a dossier. Dossier is, uh, this is like the hash of the device that we are trying to activate. It will have its serial number and uh, UUID of the virtual machine and other things. Okay, so we just do a, Control C. Second step is this. You go to the activate.fi.com. And this is the reason you have to have the internet connectivity, either on the PC or on F5. And if you go for automatic, these things, copying the dossier, I'll tell you, hold on. And do a control V here in this. And do next. The F5 servers will evaluate your information and give you a license. So either you can uh, click on download the license and then import it there, or you can just uh, simply do a control A, control C, go back here and paste the license. And do next. And if we had uh, chosen automatically, we would not have to do these things. So automatically is you just enter the activation key that we entered and do next. So all these things will be done automatically. We will not have to do this copy paste thing. And you need to log in again once it is activated. The default is admin admin or GUI or CLI default is different. Sushil, you have some question? Yeah, hi. Yeah. So yeah, I just want to know that what are what are what are the requirements for if uh, we go for the automatic? So yeah, that's what I said. The require if you want to do automatic, this this device here should be able mm -hmm. to reach to internet. That is the only requirement. Okay, and if I go for the uh, manual, then uh, this uh, device then your PC must have uh, access to internet and and one of the Nick port must be connected with the management port of uh, management port of the right yeah you must have access to both to the device as well as to the internet 
okay so so as of now the device has uh, the the device in in our case the device does not have any connectivity to internet it is the pc which is having access to internet and a connectivity to the device so sure, that's sure. why we did manual sure thank you so this is the next page after you uh, license or uh, after you activate the device this is where you uh, give the resources to the device like the cpu management the cpu and the memory and the disk so all these things say for example you you don't define a value here uh, they they have uh, defined some predefined profiles like small medium and large so uh, the best is to keep these uh, default like ltm so how how much of uh, processing or how much of resources you want to give to this particular module ltm so the default is nominal but you could also do dedicated and minimum dedicated is like even if you don't uh, even if it uh, would not need that much of memory it will acquire that and it will lock that memory with itself no other module will be able to use that memory and when it is nominal all the modules uh, can share memories and other resources yeah. so in the trial but if, uh, but yes. if other but if we don't want other modules to use the memory of the device so so like this uh, by default that they, they are all none there's nothing unchecked these so they are just licensed but they are not uh, provisioned So now we do a next, and when you do next, you enter these, uh, or you can modify these details about uh, certificate. If you have a public certification authority, if you have certificate from there, you can import them right here. And if you plan to choose a certification authority later, also you can leave it uh, as it is. So since we are not uh, having a public CA. do next with the self signed certificates and these are the management port configurations you can keep it manual or you can make it uh, with dhcp this is the host name of the device lab.bigip host ip address is the management ip address and uh, these are the default logins so there are two accounts to it there is one admin account and there is this root account root account is used for uh, for cli access okay you don't access cli with admin and you don't access gui with root so admin is for gui access root is for cli access consider it like that and you enable ssh access you enable it uh, you enable uh, the root to log in through ssh or you enable admin to log in through ssh and if we have to configure the vlans and make it uh, ready we click on next otherwise you can click on finished so i think we can configure the vlans here since we are here this is about ha you can you can leave it as it is we will come back to it when we do ha and this is about defining the internal vlan or internal interface so we define things as per our uh, topology internal means which is towards the server so internal here is ethernet 1.2 and external is 1.1 and internal is having 172 to 16 ip addresses so it is already taken as in it has been 
filled by the browser since I've been using this again and again. So self IP is 172.16.1.31 and self, there are two IP addresses you see here, self IP and floating IP. So there is this one physical IP on, on the interface and there is this floating IP address. Now this floating IP address, what is the use of this? We will uh, learn this as we proceed in, in our course. There are multiple use of this uh, floating IP address. Like this is used for NATing also. This is used for HA also. Two, two prominent use of uh, floating IP addresses we will see. So for now, just uh, look at it as a, as, a, as a secondary IP address or as a virtual IP address on the same interface. Yeah. And VLAN interfaces, it is 1.2 and we are saying this is untagged. Okay. And we do next. Next is external. External is again 10.1.31 is the self IP, 33 is the floating IP. So that is what is given here and 1.1 is the external VLAN. <coughs> okay, and this is again for HA. We will come back to it. The VLAN has no do you want to continue. Okay, one moment. Uh, we don't want to create. We have already created. So this external. Again, we will come back to this when we do HA. But uh, since we are at this point, I will explain one thing. This is trying to say which uh, VLAN will be used for HA. So you could say internal VLAN. Ah, Network time protocol, NTP configuration, you can give an address here for now. I'm just skipping it. Again, DNS information, you guys can give your uh, DNS servers, forwarders. Config sync to which interface you want the config sync to happen. We will again look at these points when we do HA. And that's all. This is again for mirroring, connection mirroring. Again, we will see this in HA. And we do finish. So if there is further HA configuration we have to do, we have a second device and we have to make the connection, then you do next here. Otherwise you can click on finish. So this is the setup utility that is like the first time when you are setting up the device. So if you are setting up an HA pair very first time, you can go through it from uh, start to end. Otherwise you can you know, finish in between. And whatever uh, modules that you will activate, you will keep seeing options here. And this is how the device looks like when you log into it for the first time. And for the statistics, you, you go to a different window. This needs a flash. And this is how it looks like. It is loading. And this is how the statistics of the device will look like. It will give you the CPU utilization, memory, throughput, how many connections are going through it. Right? So just the normal things for monitoring. Anyway, you would not monitor it here. You would monitor it on your centralized uh, monitoring system. But there are options. Under local traffic, you would see your... Uh, Okay, Sorry, 
under network you would see your interfaces and other self ip addresses that you configured right these are the interfaces 1.1 and 1.2 they are up now here you will see the list of vlans that we created although we we said untagged interfaces but it still say that there is a tag of this so this is only for for f5's reference we are not using this anywhere all the things related to the device and ha you will see here in uh, device management the device group device trust other things and regarding the system update licensing all those things will be here this is where you can check for your license this is where you can uh, under software management you can do the upgrades if say this is version 12.x that we are running latest is i guess 14 not sure so if we have to upgrade you can you simply have to you know import the image and then click on install that's it so very simple and very stable it works every bloody time it doesn't fail like in checkpoints and other devices so in interview nobody would ask you questions about updating an fi because it's bloody simple Do, do we have a do we have option for rollback yes you do have options for rollback you can since you will have images here you okay. can uh, delete those images and uh, you can create is that one moment you can create archives so archives are like uh, snapshot of the device say for example i can create an archive right now for say fresh installation let's just say fresh install right So this will give you status and this is where it has stored your file. So this is a .ucs file that you can use to roll back. Okay. Yeah. And there are other uh, backup options also which we will see later. So those are related to only the configuration backup. UCS is like the complete uh, snapshot of the system. Is there any option for auto archive or archive we need to do manually? Now this you have to do manually and if it has to be done uh, automatically there is a small script that you get and okay. in the back end it fires the command for you. Yeah, like every uh, one week or 10 days uh, we can archive right. as a backup. Right, right. Yeah. And that your, uh, again, as, as the centralized uh, management system like pulling the configuration of all other devices that can pull the configuration or or the archive from uh, f5 as well oh okay fine okay so uh, that's about it uh, guys in, in the first lecture or in the demo whatever way you see it <coughs> in the coming class that is tomorrow we we do things ahead from here we look at uh, how do we configure the pools how do we configure the nodes how do they work together and other things load balancing algorithms mechanisms we will see all those things right okay uh, so tomorrow's lecture will be also a demo or, or how I, I don't understand when you say demo. I mean, the the batch has started. You you yeah. may out yeah. of it. So 
it's up to you how you see it it's a demo or it's a class for you no i'm i'm saying like how it needs to be joined because will it be the same link or there will be a separate code or something yeah it link. will be mostly the same link mm -hmm. it, it is it will be the same let me just keep it simple okay thanks yeah so i i know who all joined <laughs> so that's not a problem so the link will be same for everyone it's just that uh, when when you guys will after a class or two i will lock it and only only the ones who are continuing with the batch will get the get the password to enter the meeting like that Okay. And uh, and what about the recorded videos? Yeah, those you will get on a portal once you guys are done with the payments and uh, other uh, uh, formalities. You will have uh, the user name and password created for you, and we mm -hmm. will start uploading the videos. Fine. And from tomorrow onwards, the course will be start will be run in a full pace, right? Yeah, this was full pace. I mean, was this slow for you? I, this no, is the pace just, I go with. No, I'm just That's saying that. Said. For me, the batch has started. It's up to mm -hmm. you. You guys take it. Is it a demo for you, or, or you want to continue? Could you please tell me that how much time it will take to complete? See, uh, going by this pace, we take minimum of eight to eight to ten. Uh, Eight to ten lectures of it, mm -hmm. which means two, 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 a month and a half, I would say. Month and a half. Yeah, okay. five weeks, five to six weeks, I would say, for for this model FI. So, so guys, this includes uh, like, what will be the overall uh, time duration for uh, Checkpoint, Palo Alto, and FI? Checkpoint will take slightly longer than F5, maybe maybe two two three classes more than uh, F5. So we can say if if I say four weeks for F5, like eight classes. Mm. If we go very strict on timings, so four uh, four weeks for F5, five to six weeks for Checkpoint, and again mm. four weeks for uh, Palo Alto. How um, uh, sorry, I didn't get how many weeks for Palo Alto? Four, four weeks. Okay. So four plus four plus six. So after F five, you will start Palo Alto or Checkpoint? After F five, we will start with uh, Checkpoint. Actually, I usually start with uh, Checkpoint, Palo Alto, and then F five. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, up till now, we were doing our seventy seven in Checkpoint. So from this batch onwards, I'll be I'll be doing with uh, R80. So I had to set up the lab and other things, and I did not want you guys to wait more for that. So that's why we're starting with F5 now. And in the meantime, I will set up a checkpoint, and by the time F5 finishes up, we will be ready with a checkpoint lab. Any guides from Microsoft? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, come again, please. Get any note, guide. Uh, See, uh, you will get for uh, you will get uh, lab guides for uh, the practical things that we do, and for theory, uh, I don't think if you can do the practical, you will require anything else. Uh, my idea is not to not to study from PDFs and other things. I mean, if if you would understand from PDFs, you would not be here. I, I, I would keep it simple. So I don't give any PDFs as such. I don't have a standard uh, things to create to you guys. But in case you guys want something, I can. I have everything I can give. You. So the thing is, you will have to ask for it. What do you want? Yes, uh, we record some PDF for our reference. Yeah, yeah. For for your references like admin guides and all, uh, I will give you, which you can use in your uh, office for configuring things and for support purpose. But those are not good for learning. So you would understand those once you have learned things. That's one point. 
Uh, how about the PPTs and other things that you are like uh, sharing it here that can be shared or how? Um, I can share PPTs, but what, what use that will be of to you? I mean, oh, that would be like, you know, we are taking a lecture right uh, now, now, yeah. but now for letter, letter use or letter purpose for a brushing brushing. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So for, so that we can revise and brushing. Uh, yeah, exactly. off. Okay. Okay, I give you that. We give you that in a in a PDF. Yeah, okay. and uh, and it is easy to refer because uh, suppose if you want to refer a new PDF or new uh, presentation, again it will be difficult. So if the same uh, presentation which you share, that would be fine for us to recall. Okay. Hello, Sukesh. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I joined late. Uh, I'm trying to find out, you talk about lab guides and all of that. Are you going to provide access to labs or we set up our own labs? Yeah, I'm going to provide access to the labs as well as you can set up your own labs also. So the one uh, that, okay. you, that you saw right now is as per the workbook from F5. So when I provide you the workbook, you can uh, work on the same uh, lab or you can build your own. It's up to you. Okay, okay. All right, thank you. Yeah. Uh, will you also provide the access for the uh, hardware devices? I'm, I'm talking about hardware as well. So we are not using any hardware as such. So what hardware access you want? Like uh, the lab you are providing us, it's a virtual, right? Most of them are virtual devices. Yeah, it is virtual devices. Virtualization is future boss. All the vendors nowadays, they're, they're fighting very hard uh, to sell uh, the hardware. All the SDN things coming up, virtualizations kicking in. Uh, it is time that you get used to working on virtual devices. And they work the same way. It's just that they are running on a common hardware. Huh. It is the same uh, F5 that you will see an F5 running on virtual edition and F5 running on uh, hardware, mm. you will not see any difference in the GUI. It is the same. So what difference does it make to you if it is coming from a, from a hardware or from a virtual edition, right? Fine. Sir, a year on general question I have. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, do we have any idea like what is the major difference between uh, Netscaler and FI? Like a wow overview. Uh, see, uh, I have worked on two load balancers. Unfortunately, Netscaler is not one of them. Okay. Uh, I worked on this uh, uh, FI and uh, this thing. Uh, Riverbed. Riverbed. Okay, uh, Revobed also we have a load balancer? Yes. Okay, the Revobed is for uh, optimization, no? Yes. Uh, and they have, what is the name of the product? Steelhead. So, Revobed is a Steelhead product. Oh, yes. Good. So, yeah. uh, there is a load balancer that they make and I have, it, it's very similar to F5 by the way. It's similar because uh, in our organization we have a net scaler, so it is just a kind of question. Like, uh, yeah, uh, no, I would not be able to tell you, but if you would share me uh, the the GUI and if you would someday share the screen, I will be able to tell you what what things are there and what not. Okay, fine, fine. So, yeah. Then see, these are all devices; they work all the same. It's yeah. about uh, the the stability and the support that they give that makes them stand apart from the other device. Yeah, concept, make, con, yeah, concept remain the same. Oh. Cisco doesn't make very great products, right? Yeah. But they, they provide exceptional support. So that's why they're in the market. There are some things or the other different from each other. Okay. Oh, and I have one. Question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, can you explain the deployment uh, one tire and uh, this deployment shadow? It will cover in the class. Deployment of what? Uh, the uh, FI deployment uh, one tire, the two tires. 
So whatever the deployment will come. Yeah, the, there are two ways in which you can. Okay. We will talk about that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so, guys, uh, how long the uh, the lab access would be? If the enroll, if we will enroll for this, see if you enroll for this, the the lab access is there until the course is uh, running. And also, if I see that you are practicing, I, I don't uh, I don't remove uh, users. There are many many users to it right now, but they don't all uh, practice. So I show you. Mm. We have many users to this uh, server right now, but not all of them are accessing. So as long as the new users are not facing problem, I don't really delete the old one. So you will have access to some undefined time, but if I have to put a put a boundary, that will be like till the course is there. I delete. Uh, no, because the, 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 why I'm asking because maybe you know during the course uh, which is going on, uh, since it's a weekend and everybody is still working, so you know sometimes uh, after after course as well we need to have some practicals or need to perform. Yeah, that is what I'm saying. Yeah. That is what I'm saying. You will have access to it mm -hmm. okay. after the course uh, will be there. But say for example, I all of a sudden I get famous and I get many. Uh, <laughs> Uh, queries, many many sessions, many students coming up. So ideal uh, access would be till the course is on. But for you right now, uh, it it will be, you know, it will stay for after the course also. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. And even if uh, it's like, even if I have to delete a certain user, I would delete the user who is not accessing the lab instead of the one who is accessing. Even if I have to make some space for the new ones. So don't worry about the lab access, you will keep getting it. I, ha I still have uh, people accessing it who were in a batch last year forget about uh, the batch or so so if you're practicing if you're working on it genuinely i would not kick you out yeah okay thanks yeah <clears throat> all right anything else guys I am done for today's session. I don't have anything more to tell you guys about it. So, so one last another question is like, uh, will it be, uh, uh, will it, will the sessions would have uh, troubleshooting scenarios as well? Like, uh, you know, in the real life when we are facing some issues like related to the technologies, whether it would be a troubleshooting scenarios as well or just kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, theory and practical. Yeah, see, uh, we, we will be implementing things from scratch. Mm -hmm. and you don't get it working on the first time. Okay. Yep. There, there will be times when I have configured things the, the way they should be and they're not working. So that gives us an opportunity to troubleshoot. Mm -hmm. So that's how things will be. But Sukesh, uh, I think uh, as, as I remember, you mentioned this thing that you will share some uh, your past experience which you have faced most yes, of the there, time. There are uh, topics and there are... Uh, uh, there are, uh, I would say, configurations where people tend to make mistakes, including me. So when, as we go along the course, I'll be telling you guys that this is where you can make mistakes. This is where you have to be cautious about. So that's how it is. And for okay, them, so for them, there, there will be some uh, means, uh, the, the, the troubleshooting incident scenario, which usually come uh, across while the, 
while this this technology while this f5 technology yes yes we will discuss that thank okay. you okay one last thing can you yeah. share the record on please since i came in late so i can go through what you discuss along the class uh you, you want me to share the link of the the video yes. okay yes the recording yes please okay all right thank yeah. you and i believe uh, the the platform was good for learning no lag uh, and other stuff like that i think we were pretty much together as far as the audio and video is concerned at times what happens is video is lagging behind audio it was up to the mark right whatever yeah, yeah. i was showing i was talking about the same thing right yeah yeah it's fine only yeah and and also we will get some uh, more tips uh, ideas like uh, by comparing with the real time environment like yeah, that is all very exactly uh, complementary things that you will get more than what you okay <laughs> okay so the theoretical things no so we can understand sometime uh, so when it comes to the real time so we can't understand where these devices are placed exactly yeah. and what are the different kind of topologies we will have right we will have right. yeah because uh, when it comes to firewall firewall will be placed only in a data center firewall will be placed in a uh, uh, data center as well as all over the branches so we will have some confusions right right yeah. there's only one place where you will find uh, f5s and we will talk about that okay <laughs> Actually, I have a question. I think so. This is not the right time. I think. Uh, actually, whatever we can cover in uh, firewall, the topic. In in firewall, uh, if you talk about checkpoint, we cover everything that is there in uh, CCSA. Okay. Plus, we also do uh, uh, things like HA and side to side VPN. I think HA is part of uh, CCS. Yeah, I can always say you were sleeping. I was calling you to answer me. Why? Yeah, you got it, Pawan. So CCSA and uh, uh, HA. Okay. okay. So CCSA includes uh, all the netting, backing, backing up uh, the checkpoint devices, right? All, all the different type of backups which are there, plus NATing, plus uh, IPsec VPN, plus remote access VPN, plus uh, LDAP. We also see uh, uh, on things configured with uh, the Active Directory, the firewall communicating with the Active Directory, and uh, that does it include uh, clustering as well? Yes, uh, HA I said as a, uh, that's that's clustering only in uh, checkpoint. Yeah, checkpoint calls it uh, clustering. So we do that as well. And uh, yeah, when we do LDAP, uh, there are more things that I explain which are not even part of the certification. So yeah, we we cover almost everything I would say. And in Palo Alto, uh, Palo Alto has some restrictions. restrictions regarding uh, the licenses there are certain things which you cannot do without uh, without having a license so and checkpoint uh, sorry the palo alto they don't provide uh, trial licenses checkpoint gives you a 15 day trial license but palo alto they don't give you any license so without license there are certain things that you cannot do like url filtering right that you cannot do you can do file blocking but not url filtering decryption you cannot do so i will not be able to show you those things logs you cannot see logs very important thing you cannot see logs without uh, uh, the license but there are many more things which we can do without license like netting checking the policies user management in palo alto then uh, ha high availability 
which is clustering again. And side-to-side -side VPNs, you cannot do remote access there. Global Protect requires licensing. You can do file blocking. You can block a certain type of certain uh, file type. You can check with, uh, yeah, but there is one plus point. We can see how these things can be configured. Say, for example, LDAP and all. We can see these things, how they can be configured, but we cannot have them working. They will not work. We can configure, but we cannot test. How about the panorama and other things that will not be covered, right? Yeah, panorama, I will only talk about uh, the basics of it, but we will not be able to cover panorama because, again, the, there are license limitations. Mm -hmm. But you will have a fair idea about how things are working because we will be going to Palo Alto once we are done with uh, Checkpoint. So all the topics that you see in Checkpoint, they will again come in Palo Alto and you'll get a very good idea about how things will be working. So even if you will get a Palo Alto licensed, you will be able to configure that. So lab won't be there for the panorama as well, because it, won't, it needs to have a license as well, right? Yeah, lab won't be there for panorama, but lab will be there for Palo Alto. Uh, other things which, which we can see, we will do those things practically like the VPNs, uh, clustering, matting, all those things will be covered in okay. also. Mm -hmm. But in checkpoint, everything will be covered, right? Yeah, in checkpoint, everything will be covered theoretically, practically, everything. Okay, so what we can compare with checkpoint and Palo Alto? Yes. Okay. And what, what about this SSL VPN and um, IPS? These things will be covered? It is altogether different. We will do SSL VPN, but not IPS. Yeah. IPX will not be covered? Yeah. Yeah, Krupesh, you were saying something. IP, yeah, IPS will not be covered. IPS is altogether a different uh, module, I would say. Okay. Many things to it. So we would not be covering IPS. IPS, IDS. Uh, yeah, those, that's one different module altogether. That doesn't come under the uh, firewall. So, so guys, I guess uh, on the checkpoint, we will get the, um, so we can, uh, we can, uh, in, uh, during our evaluation version also, so we can add this IPS, uh, ID, uh, IPS as well, right, uh, as a blade. So that will be covered? Or... No, there are options in firewall to make that as a blade, but... Uh, uh, in, in production, if you see, you do not enable all the blades on a firewall. Yep. There are, you you set it up differently. Hmm. There are different uh, vendors specialized for IPS and IDS. So you do, there are, see, there are things you can do on routers also. Just for the information, actually, how it works, that's what I'm saying. Uh, no, no, see, if, if you, if you, it is a different path altogether. Uh -huh. it's, like, it's not like something on the way I have to explain. Uh -huh. You have to, I'll have to design uh, altogether a different lab and different scenarios. And that is, again, doing the module. So I, I've, I, I'm saying this because I've tried this on, on a similar request that you are making. I said, okay, we do it, but uh, it, it, is, it makes things difficult. And lengthy also. <laughs> at, at least if you get like one or two class for um, this IPS and all, yeah. like introduction, some idea, that would be fine. Yeah, we, we can talk about in a session that what, what these devices are and how do they function and why do we need them. We can yeah. discuss uh, these things, but uh, nothing practically. Okay, because uh, nowadays most of the firewalls, all the firewalls um, like integrated the type uh, feature in the firewall itself. Yeah, see, all the vendors there, they're playing like smartphones now. Our, our firewall is having this feature, that feature, whether you use it or not. So these things have become selling point. I haven't seen IPS IDS being used along with the firewall. I mean, on the same device.
so this context based firewall or it's uh, it belongs to i availability or this sorry context based one context based firewall like virtualization mm -hmm. that yeah. belongs to i availability i availability or it's a different concept somewhere i heard this no, that that belongs to being uh, high availability only not uh, a different concept okay it's like a virtualization right right, yeah, right. this okay. virtualization that would be covered here yeah we will talk about this there's no, there's just a simple small concept about how do they do it it is all the same okay All right, guys. Anything else uh, for me? From my end, I'm done. All right. Looks like we don't have any more questions. See you guys tomorrow then on on same link. Same okay. Come okay. Back. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. And bye bye. Thanks. Okay. So okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.